Hi, this is 100 and 100, where we are reviewing 100 VR games in 100 days. Today, we're looking at Front Defense VR. Front Defense VR is a first-person shooter based in World War II that allows you to shoot all of your favorite World War II weapons, throw grenades, and defend your people from the oncoming soldiers on the opposite side. There's a lot of blood, there's a lot of bullets, and occasionally someone's going to ask you for a light for their cigarette. In our VR Gear Game Reviews, we like to cover as many aspects of the game as possible so you can make an informed decision before you try or buy one of these VR titles. And we're excited to do that for you for Front Defense today. First, let's talk about getting up and running with this game. The file size is about six gigabytes and it's gonna take a reasonable amount of time to download on a medium speed internet connection. So be prepared to wait a little bit. Once the download is complete, it should automatically install and allow you to jump in right away. You'll find this title on the Steam Store and the Viaport Infinity Store, but it is not on Oculus or the PSVR Store. Once you get into the game, there is a tutorial that will allow you to learn how to use various weapons that you will use during gameplay, such as shooting AK-47s or other types of rifles, as well as throwing grenades at oncoming enemies. There are wooden targets that you're shooting at in the shape of enemy soldiers. And once you're done on the shooting range, you're then put out into the heat of battle where you start behind a bunker to defend your position against the oncoming enemy. This game is a first person shooter game. You'll play this game from a standing or sitting position as you defend your position against the oncoming enemies. You won't be moving through the streets, but the streets are coming to you, so there's no need to go anywhere. But this first person shooter from a perspective is more like a stationary shooting gallery game than it is a full on first person shooter action game because of the lack of movement through the level. You'll play this game from the first person perspective. You'll see your hands, and if you look down, you'll see your utility belts and part of your uniform. Although you look like you are an invisible person because you really don't see your chest or other parts of your abdomen, you won't really see much other than your utility belt, your hands, and your weapon, but they are there. Your utility belt holds the clips that you use to reload your weapon, and your hands have gloves that you can use to fire a weapon, reload a weapon, throw a grenade, pull the pin of a grenade, and occasionally light your fellow soldier's cigarette when they ask for it. The theme and story of this game is very simple, and we felt that it was pretty immersive, but there was a lot lacking on the story side, although there was a strong theme around World War II. The theme of this game was strengthened by all of the details that were brought in to make the experience more immersive and convincing. The simple story of this game was basically defend your city from the incoming enemies. And that was all to the theme of World War II. While it was clear what the theme was and we knew what the story was, even though it was simple, it wasn't a very powerful storyline and that made the theme a little bit less potent for us and we wish there was a lot more done there. But it was clear what the theme was and the story was shared with you. So you could proceed knowing where you were and what you were doing and what your mission was. For the controls in this game, they were very simple. You would use the hand grips to grab items and you would use the trigger to fire weapons. This meant when you wanted to reload your weapon, you would use the hand grip to grab a new clip and you would move it toward the gun that was in your other hand, and then you could continue to fire. Uh, fortunately, there wasn't the need to reload. Some of the games we played, there's the option to reload or engage or disengage the safety, and we did that on accident quite a bit. This game was a lot simpler in the controls, and we like that, especially when the dexterity of your fingers in the real world is not resembled properly in virtual reality, a more simple controller input is always appreciated, and this game had exactly that. 
For music and sound, this game was really intense to play, and there wasn't a musical soundtrack in the background, but there was a lot of background sound that was going on. This meant rumbling of tanks, also guns being shot, the block away, and you were able to tell what direction all of these sounds were coming from. If someone was shooting from the left, you would hear it from the left. If they were shooting from the right, you would hear it from the right. This allowed you to have much more immersive and interactive gameplay you could quickly find the person shooting at you because the audio cues told you where they were shooting from. This was a very helpful part of the game and it was really great to have it. For player movement, this game was very simple and it was played from a standing or sitting position, but we recommend you play it from a standing position because the game will actually track you if you duck down. And there's a lot of opportunity to duck and avoid bullets. If you don't duck, you're likely to die a lot faster. There is a barricade that is positioned in front of you. And when you do duck down, you are safe from the enemy's incoming bullets. But aside from ducking down and rotating to the left or right and looking up and down, you don't move from your standing position and you don't teleport to other parts of the street while you're fighting the enemy. Player movement is very minimal, and that had a huge impact on whether or not you would get motion sick while playing this game. For motion sickness, this game is one of the better games because you don't have any player movement in VR that is not mapped in the real world. And that's because you're playing from a standing position and you're fighting from a standing position in VR. There were times when you would be hit by an enemy bullet and your vision would become blurred. That didn't necessarily cause motion sickness, but it did cause an element of disorientation, which was in fact part of gameplay because you did get shot and now your body is responding by having a decreased field of view and decreased clarity in your vision. Aside from that, motion sickness was kept to a very, very small minimum. <laughs> For environment and immersion, this game was very immersive and we can thank the sound for that. Hearing the enemy as they approach, the gunshots as they're whizzing past your helmet or hitting you in the chest or arm, this all added to a very immersive environment. There was one problem that really irritated us throughout gameplay. We tried to ignore it, but it kept bothering us. And that is that you could see the brim of your helmet as it was coming down into your field of view and it doesn't go away and you can't adjust it. It remains in your field of view at the top of your field of view the entire time you are in combat, which became very annoying, very fast, and we wish it wasn't there. We assume the developers put it there to add immersion, but what it really did was distract our gameplay and reduce the immersion. Other than that, the immersion was really great. We felt like the environment was very conducive to helping you feel present and the environment was interactive enough to really boost that immersion to the next level. All right, let's look at the overall scorecard for Front Defense VR, starting with theme and story. We're giving this game a seven out of 10 for theme and story. There was a very strong theme around World War II, and there was a story about you defending a city against the incoming enemies. The story though was sort of weak and we found that, and as a result, we have deducted some points for that. The theme was done very well, but a few more details would have been appreciated since there is so much information that could have been leveraged to be put into a game about World War II. But overall, it added to the immersion. There was a clear story and a clear theme. So a seven out of 10 for story and theme. For controls, we're giving this game an eight out of 10. This is a very good score, and that has a lot to do with the simplicity of the controls, as well as the responsiveness of the virtual world while you use those controls. There are some points deducted because sometimes in the game, these controls ended up being frustrating as far as interacting with different elements, specifically around reloading weapons or grabbing things that fell on the ground. But an eight out of 10 for controls in this game. For music and sound, we're giving this game another high score of eight out of 10. The sound for this game was very immersive and it made the environment that much more rich as you experienced what it was like, presumably on the battlefields of a World War II defense. We thought the sound was great in this game. There was no music though, and that might've been beneficial perhaps at the end of a level as part of like a victory banner or something like that. But 
Overall, the sound was great. So an eight out of 10 for music and sound. For player movement in this game, we're giving it a six out of 10. Now, this is a little bit above average and this game is played from a standing position, but the problem with a game like this is when you are interacting with the world around you and you know that you will be standing in one spot the whole time, if objects go outside of your reach, there needs to be some sort of mechanism that will help you retrieve those without having to physically move and pick those up. Other games use a summon method that allows you to virtually grab the item and have it come to you if it's outside of your reach. This game required you to physically bend down and have your virtual hand touch the virtual object if you were going to pick it up. This made it very difficult and it made you wonder what the player movement limits were and what you were expected to actually do if a clip or a gun fell out of your reach. As a result, this game gets a 6 out of 10 for player movement. For motion sickness, this game gets a near-perfect score of a 9 out of 10. You're playing it from a standing or sitting position, probably standing, but the world around you in the virtual space does not move. The only thing in it that does move is you. This maps perfectly to your movement in the physical world. As a result, when you move in the real world, those movements are mapped perfectly in the virtual world. This means motion sickness is minimized and you don't feel sick. This is great because it allows you to stay in the game longer and experience more of the level before having to leave for motion sickness to maybe never come back. This game did great, a nine out of 10 for motion sickness. And finally for environment and immersion, this game gets an eight out of 10. There was a lot going on in this game. You felt very immersed as the sounds of the bullets whizzing past your helmet or hitting into you or the explosions detonating next to you as you're fellow soldiers were being exploded, but all of this added for a very immersive and very rich environment. So an eight out of 10 for environment and immersion. So the overall score for Front Defense VR is a very good score of a 7.6 out of 10. This game was a lot of fun to play. There was a bunch of different weapons that you could use while you were in gameplay. And the tutorial at the beginning was very helpful to get you up and running with the different control inputs that helped you be more successful during gameplay. We recommend you go try this one out. It's on Viveport Infinity, part of your subscription if you have that, or you can go buy it on the Steam store. This has been 100 in 100, where we are reviewing 100 VR games in 100 days. Hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so that you can be notified tomorrow when we release another VR game review. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next one.